SPS modified bitumen membranes came to the United States from Europe in the late 1970s. So the technology and installation methods have been around in our industry for over 30 years. But if installing SPS membranes is new to you, then you should be aware of some basic safety information before getting started. 1. Do not install SPS torch grade membranes without careful review and implementation of all applicable safety and fire watch requirements. 2. Familiarize yourself with the propane gas equipment storage and handling guidelines and worker safety precautions and training. 3. You must remember that the installation of a roofing system is a construction process. And as with any construction process, safety is a key element. Therefore, U.S. Ply recommends that all applicable safety standards and good roofing practices be followed. 4. Fire prevention is your responsibility. Remove any and all potentially flammable articles from the work area and ensure good roofing practices are being followed. For more information, visit www.usply.com to download product data sheets and review all information concerning torch safety and application techniques found in the U.S. Ply Modified Bitumen Specification Manual. Step 1. Preparation. The surface over which the membrane is to be installed must be clean, smooth, dry, and prepared in accordance with the U.S. Ply Modified Bitumen Specification Manual. Suitable substrates are prime structural concrete, base sheets that are self-adhered, mechanically fastened, asphalt-adhered, or torch-welded, ply sheets that are self-adhered, mechanically fastened, asphalt-adhered, or torch-welded, and gypsum cover boards such as Densdeck Prime or Securock. Unsuitable substrates are insulation boards such as polyisocyanurate, perlite or wood fiber, fresh asphalt glazes or flood coats, areas with solvent-based cold adhesives or mastics, or any other flammable substrate such as wood, plywood, or oriented strand board. SBS membranes must not be applied during adverse weather or without precautionary measures in temperatures below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, refer to the cold weather precautions found in the U.S. Ply Modified Bitumen Specification Manual for more information. For slopes less than 3 inches per foot, install the cap sheet perpendicular to the slope. For slopes 3 inches per foot and over, SBS torch grade membrane should run vertically or parallel to the roof slope. All laps must be parallel or perpendicular to the slope of the roof so that water is never running against the lap. Step 2. Using the propane torch. Closely read, understand, and follow all information in the Torch Equipment Operation Manual for safe torch ignition. Only proceed after verifying that the torch equipment is properly connected and that hoses are in good working condition. Check all fittings and other equipment by using soapy water to detect gas leaks. Never use a flame to check fittings or other equipment. When igniting the torch, make sure the torch valve is open to its lowest possible setting and the trigger is not engaged. Some newer model torches are equipped with self-ignition devices, while older models require the use of a spark striker. The striker must be held a safe distance away from the torch head when igniting. Step 3. Roll Alignment After removing the tape from the roll, the coiled membrane must be unrolled approximately 10 feet, aligned, and then re-rolled to apply. When working on a slope or uneven substrate, Unroll the membrane completely, allow time to relax, and work out any wrinkles that could cause misalignment or cause the membrane to curve down slope. This can be accomplished by having one person stand on one end of the roll, while another person at the opposite end of the membrane shifts it from side to side, helping the membrane to lay flat and align properly without wrinkles. Membrane should be overlapped 4 inches on the sides and 6 inches on the ends. Stagger adjacent end laps a minimum of 18 inches apart so that no adjacent end laps coincide. Once proper alignment is achieved, back roll the membrane keeping the roll tight without forming a cone when re-rolling. Step 4. Installing the membrane. When a torch welding technique is used, the propane torch flame should be applied uniformly across the exposed underside surface of the membrane and lap areas until the compound reaches the proper application temperature. 
The best visual indicator for proper temperature is when the compound develops a slight sheen. If the membrane produces a heavy smoke, this means too much heat is being applied. Be sure that the burn-off film is completely burned off where present on the underside of rolls, membrane selvage edges, or both surfaces as applicable. In optimum conditions, move the flame from side to side in the shape of an L, applying about 80% of the heat to the membrane and 20% of the heat to the substrate. In colder temperatures, more heat may be necessary on the substrate by applying 60% of the heat to the membrane and 40% of the heat to the substrate. Also, a slower pace may be required to ensure that proper heating is accomplished. Prior to torching Durastar SBS, extra precaution when heating the roll should be taken. In order to reduce scorching or burning of the white reflective surface, the head of the torch should be turned inward pointing away from the adjacent membrane. For best results when torching, start at the lap side, position 1, while remembering to have the head of the torch tilted away from the adjacent membrane. Work across the roll from position 1 to position 2, allowing the head of the torch to straighten. Then, extend the torch so the torch head is at position 3, which is at the juncture of the substrate and the roll, and move the torch back toward position 4. Remember to tilt the head of the torch back away from the adjacent roll as you approach position 4. Continue to hold the torch at an inward angle while moving the flame to position 5, out away from the roll along the lap area, and finally back down the lap area to position 6 as the heated roll is unrolled out into place. Be sure to keep the head tilted as you start back with position one. Once complete, re-roll the opposite end of the membrane and install in the same manner. Step five, obtaining compound flow out. As the membrane is heated, slowly unroll as the torch returns to the lap side, position six, and continue repeating this cycle to ensure proper adhesion. A minimum of one quarter of an inch compound flowout should be obtained at all seam areas. To ensure proper compound flowout is achieved at the lap seam areas, a weighted roller may be used. Roller application should follow behind the torch no less than two feet and no more than three feet away to ensure the membrane will be at the proper temperature to produce the proper flowout. Walking in the seam is also acceptable. Do not exceed a maximum of one inch compound flow out as this indicates overheating. Step six, seam touch up and repair. Check all seams for full and uniform adhesion. Dry laps are not acceptable. Unadhered seams must be lifted with a heated trowel and resealed by lightly heating the seam area using a small propane detail torch device or compatible hot air welding device. Press or roll the seam to achieve the minimum one quarter of an inch compound flowout of bitumen. Do not attempt to move the trowel on top of the coated sheet while applying pressure as the coating may become displaced. Direct pressure or light padding action is best. Step seven, end laps. For this step, there are two options available to follow. Option one, when forming an end lap, Make sure that there is sufficient material to form it. A minimum of six inches is required. First, cut the corner of the underlying membrane at a 45 degree angle to prevent buildup of excess material at the adjacent lap intersection. Next, apply USP number 41 asphalt primer or an equivalent quick drying D41 asphalt primer to the top surface of the underlying Durastar SBS membrane. After the primer has had time to dry, heat the top of the underlying sheet to soften. Then, heat the underside of the top sheet thoroughly to properly mate the two sheets together. Press or roll into place to ensure proper seam construction and adhesion and achieve the required amount of compound flow out. If end lamps fall in line or are not staggered the proper distance, a full width of Durastar SBS membrane must be installed over the end laps. All sides and end laps must be staggered from underlying plies. Step seven, option two. If a more aesthetically pleasing surface is desired, the end laps can be constructed with an abutment lap. 
This is accomplished by using a cushion strip of base sheet such as Rapid Grip Ready Base, Duraflex 90TG SBS, or another approved sheet as an underlying membrane. Next, cut the membrane to a measurement of 39 inches by 14 inches or wider. Center the cushion strip so that it will be evenly positioned under the formation of the inlap abutment. The cushion strip should be butted to the adjacent roll. When the cushion strip is butted next to the adjacent roll, it will form a T. In this case, install a 3 inch round patch of Rapid Grit Ready Base or another approved membrane so that it is centered over the T joint and adhered in place. Next, heat the Durastar SBS membrane to the cushion strip. Roll out the corresponding sheet to ensure proper abutment. Do not allow one Durastar sheet to overlap the other. Cut and trim if necessary to allow a maximum of 3 eighths of an inch gap between the adjoining membranes. Use caution not to scorch the surface of the adjacent sheet. Step 8. Seam Touch-Up After your membrane installation is complete, matching Durastar seam coat may be applied to the modified bitumen flowout if desired for a more aesthetically pleasing appearance. Use a roller or a paintbrush to coat the compound flow out or asphalt residue. This now completes your membrane installation. Please contact or consult with US Ply before beginning any Durastar project to reduce the chances of complications or errors during your roofing project. For more information about this and other US Ply products, log on to our website at www.usply.com for readily available downloads of product documents, installation videos, and digital copies of this and other installation manuals.